Hey guys, Eddie here and welcome to another video. I know it's been a while, but today we're going to be talking IPOs and the remarkably robust IPO market we've seen this year, despite the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so we've seen some blockbuster IPOs last week with Airbnb, DoorDash, and more recently we've seen Snowflake as well. Um, so these have been uh, initial public offerings where these companies, private companies, are listing on the stock market for the first time, getting access to new equity capital, uh, and their share prices have really uh, increased dramatically on their first uh, days and weeks of trading. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be discussing valuations, these new IPO names, should you be investing in them? Or is this just the dot com bubble all over again? Um, so let's start with Airbnb and DoorDash. Uh, they both raised 3 billion each last week. Uh, and Airbnb rose 113% from its $68 a share IPO price, which was already increased. The IPO range was already increased into that. Uh, DoorDash also surged 86% uh, on its first day of trading. Uh, and these are just some of the latest examples uh, of IPOs this year. North America has seen 428 IPOs this year, and this has raised a total of 143 billion, according, uh, according to Bloomberg data. Um, so not only has 2020 been the year of coronavirus, it's also seemingly been the year uh, of IPOs as well. Uh, and all of these uh, names have done extremely well um, we've seen uh, investors with an insatiable appetite for particularly tech names, but also biotech as well. Um, so names like Snowflake have done massively well uh, as investors seek to get a little bit of exposure uh, to these kind of software names. Uh, investors have been making a ton of money on these. And actually, that's a positive thing for uh, IPO names in the IPO market as investors are more likely then to try and get involved in some of the other uh, newer IPOs if they've made money on the previous ones. Interest rates are extremely low uh, and this is obviously favorable for growth companies um, and this looks to continue. Um, 2020 has also been a huge year for software as a service, biotech, think, think Moderna, which is up 700% working on the vaccine Everyone's at home. Lockdowns have been, uh, you know, imposed in most major economies. So people have not been able to go out. And of course, we've seen the Fang names dominate. We've seen Zoom up 500% year to date uh, as that work from home trend has continued. Slack be acquired by Salesforce. All these kind of tech names have done extremely well uh, as we kind of... Uh, prepare for this digital economy, the sharing economy, uh, and investors, you know, can't seem to get enough. Um, and this is really a frenzy. We've even seen the emergence of what we call SPACs. Okay, so these are special purpose acquisition companies uh, using alternative ways of a company basically listing on a stock market. And this is kind of a, a merger um, with a blank check company and the private company bringing it public. And we've seen huge volumes, um, big names and big investors like Bill Ackman, could call him Bill Sp Spackman uh, with the amount of things he's been involved in uh, and a huge volume, uh, which we've never seen before in the SPAC market. We've also seen, uh, you know, very high proceeds, uh, as I just previously mentioned, uh, with IPOs ex SPACs. Uh, but really, that's been superseded by 2014. But if you add the SPAC volume uh, in terms of the proceeds raised into that, uh, we are really at a record year. The Renaissance IPO ETF as well has seen record, almost parabolic um, flows into their ETF. Uh, and this is, you can see, verging on 700 million. Okay, and this is the total funds where you can see that institutions, retail can't get enough of these new hot IPO names. Okay, valuations are extremely frothy. If you look at most valuation metrics, not uh, to say that investors really care about those at the moment in the short term, but really there is somewhat of a mean reversion over the longer term in terms of valuations. And I was talking about this um, in some of my other vid videos in kind of Q1 of 2020 and even in uh, Q4 of 2019 about the, you know, the extreme valuations we were at. Um, this kind of optimism is looking a bit frothy, as you can see uh, from the chart to the 2000s uh, were really that dot com bubble. But there's been a lot of uh, high valuations at the moment. And this is really making investors somewhat nervous, but they still remain overweight equities, uh, even though uh, 
uh, we have seen those 2000 kind of valuation lev levels and some have termed it there is no alternative you know we're in a super low yield environment uh, with huge amounts of monetary policy yield compression through quantitative easing uh, this is seeking uh, this is leading to investors to move out the risk curve to things like private equity and those growth names even value names those value names with high dividends and obviously we've seen um, the kind of presidential election risks subside and now uh, capital allocators are indeed allocating more capital to these equities and they're getting a pretty good return on some of those dividend names as well. Uh, and of course, this is pushing the indices up. It's kind of a feedback loop where if there's a positive equity environment, then obviously more companies are going to IPO. Uh, and it's kind of leading to this yield starve environment where people are moving up the risk curve and pushing up these extremely overvalued by uh, traditional kind of valuation metrics uh, up, up and up even more, um, even though they're not generating any earnings and cash flow in some scenarios. Um, so really, the appetite is there. Of course, monetary policy is keeping yield suppressed. And we've also seen uh, huge amounts of fiscal policy, but really it's a liquidity story, lots of liquidity sloshing about. Uh, and that money, if it's not being allocated to low yield kind of treasuries, for example, it's going to try, it has to go somewhere, right, to earn, earn a return. And outperform those passive benchmarks if you are uh, an active manager um, so it's seeking it's kind of leading to that risk taking um, and like i mentioned equity valuations in the short run can go kind of parabolic but in the long run there is somewhat of a mean reversion at least what we've seen historically and as you can see uh, another valuation metric medium price to sales and this is an off uh, a common metric because a lot of these tech names don't generate any earnings so you can't look at them at a price to earnings or a price to cash flow basis um, you tend to look at them as a kind of price to sales uh, ratio uh, and actually investors this year have valued new public tech companies at 24 times so 23.9 times um, the, their LTM revenues okay uh, and this is the highest uh, of the past two decades okay Okay. Um, so this is um, leading to a lot of investors also having to use a lot of imagination to get to these valuations. But a lot of professors, financial market analysts, uh, commentators are really having a tough time to get to these valuations to see if it makes sense. Of course, we've seen the parabolic rises of things like Tesla um, this year. Uh, and this is really leading to uh, valuations being extremely stretched. Uh, and this is in basically investors betting on these companies over time. Of course, the market is forward looking, generating these profits um, and basically betting on these companies that have experienced rapid growth, continuing uh, to have this rapid growth and obviously a favorable equity environment as well. Uh, but this is uh, also driven, being driven by you know, huge cool buying vo volume, both from retail uh, and institutions. I did a video on SoftBank um, quite recently. Um, you know, retail surge, uh, retail trading has surged in popularity, especially when everyone's at home trading. Uh, and again, this is another reason, plus with all the men uh, other reasons I've mentioned, that it's pushing up these valuations. So these uh, biggest IPOs of this year, you can see the names DoorDash, um, Pershing Square, which was a SPAC, uh, Snowflake, Warner Music Group. Um, Airbnb on the first day of trading was worth 86 billion. And this is actually on par with Goldman Sachs, who was the advisor uh, actually helping them list on the stock market. Um, so huge valuations, almost unfathomable um, for many people who haven't heard of Airbnb or even Snowflake. They're exceeding some of the names that have been in the industry uh, for a long, long time. Um, so this is something to keep an eye on. Uh, and this is what is driving people's thoughts about the froth in the market. Investors have been scrambling for these names like DoorDash, like Airbnb on the first day of trading. Um, and of course, this is an insatiable appetite uh, that can't seem to be uh, fulfilled at the moment. DoorDash, more, more kind of, if we drill down, has a market value of 60 billion now. Uh, and this was a dramatic rise uh, for the U.S. meal delivery company. And of course, um, this has flourished as restaurants have been closed. People have been ordering a lot from home using Uber Eats and uh, the like. And of course, this was a perfect time for them to go uh, an IPO. Huge appetite specifically now 
Um, and they actually closed at $189 uh, on Wednesday last week, 86% above their IPO kind of pricing range. And again, this frenzy, you know, investors can't get enough. And when you see all these names kind of increasing in value, it's very, very tempting. Uh, they raised $3.4 billion. Uh, and Mr. Zhu said DoorDash uh, had received significantly more demand for its shares than the amount it was able to issue. Uh, they actually did record a surprise profit, not really uh, surprisingly uh, in this kind of environment uh, of 23 million, even though a lot of these names obviously don't make money. Uh, in its last full year of operations, they made 660 million uh, loss um, of on revenues of 885 million. Okay, Airbnb again, super popular name as a private company. Um, this is one of the biggest tech uh, IPOs um, more recently. This is obviously a holiday rental company. Uh, and this is, again, a play on the reopening trade uh, that a lot of people have been kind of moving into uh, as we've got the vaccine news, which is obviously extremely positive. We've seen oil above $50 a barrel and all those kind of uh, value names uh, starting to outperform again as that rotation from kind of growth uh, to value takes place, all betting on the fact that we have a vaccine. And then obviously people are able to travel they're able to fly, they're able to use Airbnb and stay uh, in kind of Airbnb hotels or rooms all over the world. But again, you can't ignore the huge valuations. The shares closed at $144, massive leap from the $68. Um, and this actually was an $86 billion valuation, as I mentioned, uh, more than or the same as Goldman Sachs. And this is actually twice more than the market cap of um, the largest hotel group, the Marriott. So again, huge um, valuations with this kind of tech spin versus the kind of tr more traditional names. Um, Snowflake again, an IPO has reached 120 billion. This is exceeded now IBM, advanced micro devices, some of those kind of legacy names. Um, they've now uh, increased in share price 40% since the 2nd of December. So massive gains just after their earnings report. That was the first one as a public company. This improved, uh, Im sorry, impressed Wall Street analyst uh, with triple digit uh, revenue growth. Again, revenue growth, not so much focus on the earnings. But to put it into perspective, IBM, for example, is to generate around 74 billion uh, in revenue this year as a market cap of 112 billion that uh, obviously Snowflake has just exceeded. Okay, uh, Snowflake is on basically on pace and estimated to generate 578 million. Okay, so you can see the differences um, or the, the weighting that investors are putting on these kind of growth names like Snowflake to generate value in the future or generate uh, earnings and cash flow in the future if they're willing to basically overlook these relatively low uh, revenue figures compared to comps. Why is everyone so bullish? Like I mentioned, we've had the slosh of liquidity, monetary and fiscal. OK, we've got the vaccines now, a series of different vaccines. Um, we've got breadth in the kind of rally of the stock markets as we've seen that value rotation. Morgan Stanley are forecasting uh, 2.8 trillion of liquidity in 2021. And this is, we've got the Federal Reserve on Wednesday, but this is the mantra that every bank has taken, every government has taken basically, we'll spend now, worry about it later, or don't <laughs> seem not, not to worry. Um, so of course, people like the Fed, uh, central banks like the Fed are you know, uh, probably going to increase their quantitative easing packages or move out the duration curve and uh, buy longer duration assets. This is all to keep financing costs low. So those uh, businesses that need to borrow uh, to fund their liquidity and kind of solvency needs uh, is satisfied. But again, this slosh of liquidity has to go somewhere. Uh, and this usually distorts uh, the valuations of assets. And really, this was triggered by let's say the Fed and all global central banks on in March this year, stepping in and saying, we'll backstop um, the credit markets, for example, will buy any investment grade high yield credit. Um, when they started buying Apple and Amazon bonds, it made no sense. This really was a green light to investors that the Fed uh, has everyone's back. Uh, another European central bank, the BOJ, they're all flooding the market with liquidity and this market, this liquidity's uh, got to go somewhere. OK, and this is another reason that is pushing uh, valuations and asset prices upwards. There are risks, OK, to these valuations. And, you know, the, the faster they rise, often 
uh, they, they fall just as fast. And there are risks on the horizon, uh, like the virus muta mutating, you know, some side effects to people taking the virus, uh, herd uh, immunity not being achieved, delays in the distribution of the, the vaccine, for example. Of course, this is great news, but there's a huge amount of risks, um, you know, to, to this reopening trade uh, taking place. Um, and central banks and government saying, you know, maybe we'll pull back from the liquidity we're uh, providing and interest rates, uh, not to stay at the zero lower bound, which is very, very unlikely. But again, all of these would, you know, really uh, pop a hole in the in the bubble that is this kind of uh, tech stock um, valuation, you know, software as a service kind of mantra we've got at the moment. You know, and others argue maybe we're not in a in a uh, a bubble, and this bull market is just getting started. Um, so, you know, lots of different uh, commentators on either side. You know, should you be buying these uh, IPOs and these tech stocks? There's been some eye-watering gains. Um, so maybe uh, if you've got the risk appetite, you should be getting involved. But definitely. Over the short term, this can stay irrational, but over the long term, as I mentioned, there can be some mean reversion. So use proper risk management techniques. Um, and of course, uh, be careful out there. Um, you know, you only see the, the big, big gains, you know, being posted online, but um, there are some equally big losses. Remember, someone's always on the opposite side of that trade, but huge market for IPOs this year. Um, and lots of commentators, for example, at Goldman Sachs are saying this is just the start. And there's plenty of other tech names willing uh, and able to IPO in the near term future. And there's a big backlog uh, of names that want to IPO and capture this you know, really positive sentiment and equity environment. But anyway, I hope you enjoy my kind of first video back. Um, please leave some comments uh, in the description, anything you want me to cover. I'm thinking of doing some more uh, kind of focus on M&A and equity capital markets like IPOs, perhaps SPACs. If you're interested to complement uh, Anthony's and the team's content, uh, if you enjoyed this kind of different look, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.